the magic of actually making something good or even passable, right? Watchable, decent. It's so hard to do. It starts with the idea, right? What is the story? What is the idea? I was kind of a weird kid. I talked a lot. I knew I liked to write, so my father went to a garage sale and he saw a little electric typewriter and he gave it to me. And I would sit in my room all morning and I would just like type and I would spend all day writing little stories. It was my favorite thing to do. I always had a notebook. I always typed stories. I think I really liked drama classes that my auntie used to send me to and the on-camera stuff was just a way to make money. My mom would send me out and we'd do like the Sears ad and then I would just store my money for college. I didn't have a degree in filmmaking and so I was advised that the best thing I could do was either go back to school or go to the Minan and get experience. And I moved to New York with $2,000 and a credit card. I sold hot dogs and I taught the SAT for Princeton Review, interned for free and somehow, you know, got my foot in the door. So all I wanted to do was make music videos and rock docs. And when I first moved to New York, I interned at a company where that's all they did. And the company fell apart and so did the music industry. And within about a year of actually becoming their in-house producer, I watched their budgets go from, you know, $350,000 to $35,000. And it struck me that this would no longer be a sustainable model. And so I had to step away from that. And I bounced around in like reality television. And I was on a show I shall not name. And the producers wanted me to do an interview with a young child and in a setup that I wasn't comfortable with. And I told them, sorry. You know, I hadn't spent my whole life working that hard and doing all the things that I'd done to do things that I didn't emotionally agree with. So I quit, hopped in the rental car and left. One day I got really sick and I came back home and I couldn't work anymore. I was like maybe 31 or so. I was like really upset because I'd always been a really independent person. I could do whatever I wanted. And I was told by some of the doctors I wouldn't be able to go back to do what I love doing anymore. And that was not okay for me. One day, one of my aunties mentioned this idea of, you should do a film on King Kamehameha, you should do a film on this. And she mentioned our Hawaiian men dancing hula in a prison in Arizona. It didn't make sense to me. I didn't know anything about prison. Um, but it kind of stuck in my head. And I watched this very short news piece that had been done by the local station close to the prison in Eloy, Arizona. And I cried. And at the time, I was like, how am I ever gonna come back from this and get back the life that I had? And I could kind of see that they were struggling with the same thing. From the start, Bo is the one that said, this is a film about an issue that is generating a lot of conversations in our community, we should do this. I'm a Hawaiian too. So I, I understood what it means to be a Hawaiian. I don't know what it's like to be in prison, but I knew what it was like to try and feel like you're coming back from something. And that kind of said it to me, I should do this. You forgive yourself for a lot of stuff that you did. Yeah. And I think I had to go to the ends of the earth and hit bottom to really find out who I was. I never knew one ounce of Hawaiian before I even came to jail. I learned everything in jail. I don't think I truly understood the potential impact of the film until we started taking it out to share with the community recently. <laughs> 
And it really struck home with me that, you know, eighth graders, high school students, they want to talk about this kind of stuff. They want to talk about what these issues are. And when we've done screenings for predominantly Native Hawaiian children, we've asked, okay, who in this room knows or has a family member or knows somebody who's been in prison? This is a room filled with Hawaiian kids. And literally every hand in the room has gone up. I didn't expect that. I don't want to go back to jail because I have too much to lose. I'm trying not to make the same mistakes again. A film like Out of State, which addresses the overabundance of Native Hawaiians in the prison system, which is the same issue that other indigenous and native peoples are dealing with and other people of color across the country. So this is not a, an issue that exclusively is Hawaiian. This is an issue from a larger systemic problem that we're dealing with. We have too many people in jail. So be prepared. We're going to go over all of that in class on Wednesday. And sometimes when I think about each class is like a TV episode. So I have like, what's the core open to get class started? So it's like, gets people there early you know, or actually wanting to show up when your class starts at 8 a.m. Um, yeah. Yes. I really enjoyed teaching, but I didn't go to film school. So when I think about teaching, I think about all the things I wish somebody had told me so that I would feel ready when I got out to work. So I'm eager to make more stuff so that, you know, I have more things to talk about. to 10, 20 years from now, look back at what I've been able to do and say that I figured something out and that I've added to the conversation about our community. And hopefully, who we are as a people, how we're portrayed, how we're not portrayed, what's missing from the visual record of who we are. Um, I'm hopeful that, you know, in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, that those concerns begin to evaporate because we will have created more content about ourselves and found ownership over who we are. And there's a more richly developed body of work that we have made about ourselves. Mm -hmm.